Hey guys, welcome back to another episode. Ooh, uh, the color's not quite right, is it? Let me see if I can fix it real quick. Um, that's a little better. It's still better. Getting there. Almost done. Yeah, close enough. Let's talk about color quantization. Let's imagine we have a bunch of particles strewn about in space, and let's say we want to categorize these particles based on their location. Well, we could imagine one giant category, a large box that encompasses all of the particles, and we could say that every particle's location is simply the center of mass of this box. But that's not a very good approximation. What if we divide this box further into octants by splitting it along x, y, and z? In this case, our approximation becomes better, and if we imagine continually splitting the box again and again in a similar way, we can eventually exactly represent the locations of all of our particles. In computer science, this structure is known as an octree and has a number of different uses. For example, let's imagine that these particles are actually colors and that the x, y, and z axes correspond to the red, green, and blue values of individual pixels in an image. In this case, we can use the octree to perform a special type of compression, color quantization. Let's say we want to remove all colors from any given image except for eight. Well, if the image data is represented by an octree, we simply need to choose the eight most populated boxes. If we want 32 colors, we choose 32 boxes. And if we want the full color spectrum, we use the entire tree. In this way, we can selectively remove unnecessary colors from our image, which is the heart of color quantization. Obviously, as more colors are chosen, we come closer and closer to the original image, and the trick to color quantization is removing or modifying colors such that the viewers do not realize the colors have been lost to begin with. That said, the optimal selection of a color palette is not necessarily a trivial problem and might take some thought or the use of other quantization algorithms. Anyway, that's all for now. As mentioned, the octree is an incredibly important data structure for many applications in physics and computer science and might be used later for future simulations. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.